Imagine a perfect land, where foreigners are called the N-word, giant insect eggs are the main diet, and inferior beasts are made to serve their elven masters, dying by the thousands as they struggle to make breakfast. Morrowind, released 20 years ago, is the tale of a superior race of dark elves, who with the blessing of the true goddess Azura, struggle for dominance against filthy humans, heretics, atheists, and worst of all, furries. You explore the island of Vadernfell in trying times. The barbaric human empire has taken over the land. A tribunal of three self-proclaimed gods usurped Azura's place, and another god plots under a demonic volcano. You start off as a prisoner of the empire, long incarcerated for hate crimes against beasts. You are set free by the emperor, who discovers you're an ancient hero's reincarnation, prophesied by Azura to unite the dark elves, expel all foreigners, inwas, and cast down the false gods, including Dagoth Ur, your past life's best friend. Now return to life, and plotting to slaughter the tribunal gods, establish divine rule and lead the dark elves in a genocidal jihad against all other races. So then, why is it a villain? He worships the wrong god. As you play, you learn the majestic lore that pervades everything, including about how the original Dark Elves, the not-so-dark, battled the Dwarves, a race of atheist intellectuals that mocked religion, who tried to use a dead god's heart to build a giant mecha god of their own with magic tools. You and Dagoth led a jihad against them, making the desperate Dwarves strike the heart to attain divinity, but instead vanishing from existence. It was then your friend, wife and counselor murdered you, killed Dagoth to get the tools and used the heart to be become gods. Azura, in her rage, she punished Morrowind's elves in the cruelest way for a racist society. She darkened their skin. Centuries later, Dagoth returned with divine powers and cut off the tribunal from the heart's power, invading the dreams of sleeping dark elves to make them walk around at night shielding his coat. Also spreading a blight throughout the land that makes all infected his loyal immortal minions. But driven insane by the heart's power, not only did he forget how to stand still, but his blight also turns people into the very animals he swore to destroy. Once contracted, the disease quickly spreads, turns you into a mindless zombie, and before long, you're an abomination. This blight is why we can't explore the rest of Morrowind. The island is under quarantine. Set free to stop Dagoth, you're forced to cooperate with the endless Inuas around you, get stronger, and start drinking. The beauty of Morrowind is not just in its difficulty or unique landscape, but in the freedom he gives the player. Right out of the gate, you're free to abuse the alchemy system and get rich overnight. Every challenge Morrowind throws at you will be answerable with the stacks of potions you then possess. Low health? Potion. Low magicka? Potion. Low intelligence? Bottles up. With my vast wealth I trained my skills, bought spells, and even made my own. By the time I left Caldera, there were five gods in Morrowind. As the Nerevarine, you're guided by Chaos, an Inwa agent that spends the entire game shoved inside his shitty house, shirtless, telling you what to do. After letting me recover in his bed, I got attacked by an assassin, then another one, and Chaos just stood there watching. When I got back from doing his job for him, one of the corpses was gone. When searching for it, I found bottles of skooma everywhere, a drug made from illegal crystals produced in the jungles and deserts beyond the southern border, smuggled north by foreign criminals for their profit and pleasure. Once caught, they are put in cages and forced to make something else. Despite the nearest officer being nose deep in it, you won't find bigger imperial shields than House Halalo. Spineless, submissive rats that bend over to Inwa occupation all for the sake of profit. Traitors to dark elf tradition, they advocate commerce, multiculturalism, and will blatantly discuss abolition in casual conversation. Were it up to them, the beasts would roam free, they would flood into the country, and Morrowind would be doomed to a future of equal rights, drugs, and foreign names. Among the outlanders in their ranks is Crassus Curio, the Halalo master that in the main quest will only agree to help you, the prophesied hero after a 1000 gold bribe or a deep kiss. He's the degenerate that wrote the lusty Argonian maid. Unlike its plebeian successors, Morrowind demands skill. All attacks, physical or magical, are determined by your stats and probability. If you build up an elf wizard and try to kill a rat with a knife, you won't. There's no quest markers or fast travel. If you're too dumb to deduce where the game wants you to go, then guess what? There's no regeneration either. You restore resources by resting, and if you picked the Atronax sign like you should, Magicka only goes down. Found magic boots that make you faster than a snail? It also makes you blind. Try to go swimming instead? 
you get jumped by piranhas. Truth is, the whole island is filled with treacherous maggots that will strike you at the first opportunity. But enough of House Halala. Venturing north, you'll find the Ashlanders, tribes of fundamentalist desert nomads shunned by heretic society for their adherence to the true faith. All around them you find atheist ruins, guarded by the leftover works of their long-gone masters free for appropriation. Same goes for caves filled with ghosts, demons, and poor people. Adventuring through these lands breaks lesser, potionless players. For example, one of the enemies, Bonewalkers, have an effect that nuke your strength. Strength dictates carry weight. Low strength means low carry weight. Low carry weight means you can't move. Morrowind's harsh reality is all that House Radaran says they live for. Only LARPing as the military traditionalist types, they never do anything to stop the Imperial or Heretic agenda. For all their talk of ancestral pride, they are all too happy to do whatever the hell the Emperor or Vivek tells them to. The only of the tribunal false gods in the base game, Vivek has achieved Kim, an enlightened state of being that entails realizing you live in a fake reality dreamt by an unknowable eldritch creature. Using his divine and dev powers, he formed a religion around himself, stopped a mad god's meteor just to turn it into a re-education camp, wrote poetry secretly admitting to his treachery, and failed to stop the Inwas from conquering Morrowind. In the peace treaty, all he could get was some provincial autonomy, cause the Emperor, using his own enlightenment, knew that not doing so would bring up the indescribable hell of making Telvanni wizards pay taxes. House Telvanni is not a house. It's a loose partnership of end-cap elder mages that use their power to do whatever they want. When you join them, all they'll say is that might makes right. When two Telvanni wizards have a dispute, the strongest argument is decided by whoever manages to kill the other. You can float up to a random Telvanni tower, call the wizard's mother a fat Argonian whore, and after killing him, his servants, and taking his stuff, if you tell all about it to your superior, he'll get angry, and ask you what the hell are you doing in his property? Levitation is not optional. Talvania don't bother with stairs or those who need them. Many of them older than the false gods by hundreds of years, Talvani elders don't care about them, anyone else, and much less you. While the world is threatened by a crazy deity, one elder is kidnapping rather noble girls for blackmail, another is a mad woman demanding her slaves to harvest impossible quotas of eggs to decorate her tower with, tasking you to go kill them all when they start revolting, and one a 4,000 year old genius that cloned himself a harem of multiple daughter wives, keeping the last living dwarf as a pet in his mushroom dungeon. Notice the lack of Dagoth sleepers in Telvanni lands? Unlike other houses, Telvanni have strong wills. Their hatred of others serves them, not the other way around. Case in point, Telvanni enslave all races, including Dark Elves. If you're so weak and pathetic you got yourself enslaved, then you deserved it. As you advance in such factions, you rise in rank and get your own house. For the Telvanni, it's all about fungus. To build it, you gotta fill two rocks with a soul each. One I filled with a noble Kwama worker, and the other with Vivek. By the time you forcefully retired all of your superiors and bought the entire slave market to watch them fight to the death in the deep mines underneath your mushroom tower, you know you're ready for the endgame. Using everything you've learned, you carve your way through the hordes of semi-furry Dagoth worshippers, many of them too far gone to be saved. In the final confrontation, Dagoth asks you if he would have joined him had he asked nicely, explaining the greatness he would bring Morrowind, the atrocities we would commit together, and his plan to quote, drive the mongrel dogs of the Empire from Morrowind. But during development, Bethesda had to ditch the idea of letting you join Dagoth's side. They made the calculations and realized that giving such a great evil ending to a game already so full of soul, it would drive everyone that played their latter games into suicide. And that people don't buy games, they make them. By destroying the heart and defeating Dagoth, both his and the tribunal's powers are cut off. Morrowind is saved from heresy, but doomed to the even worse fate of the Dreamer sequels. In the end, we weren't so different, Dagoth and I. We both achieved godlike powers, appropriated dwarven technology for ourselves, and hated everyone that doesn't look like us. Dagoth's problem being that no one looks like him. Two decades later and Morrowind is still a masterpiece. Play it and experience far more, like a rapist Daedra, a quest where attempting suicide is the correct answer, and the DLCs, where you deal with your whore wife. Have fun modding. This video was sponsored by House Telvani, private donators funding this video with their slave trade profits and neighbor's property. Azura bless them all. See you in was next time.